So basically, this is the first paper which is in your packet where, here's the pointer. Um, what we did was take over 500,000 SNPs to see if they predicted Chiari. So probably the most exciting finding from that paper was mutations in this growth differentiation factor 6 gene, which mutations in that gene have also previously been found in clipophile syndrome. And certainly a portion of clipophile patients also have Chiari malformations. So that was kind of the highlight for that paper. And then the next thing we did, this is the second paper, was look at those SNPs genetic variants. And now instead of looking at the clinical outcome to see if those SNPs predicted morphologic traits. So um, kind of the highlight from that particular analysis was not too surprisingly, much of the morphology of the posterior fossa region is heritable. They're correlated with each other. Surprisingly, the one piece which is not heritable is cerebellar tonsil herniation. So even though we see this as kind of part and parcel of the phenotype, just be aware that from a genetic standpoint, it's not heritable. So, but when we did this analysis, kind of the top takeaway from that paper was this gene on chromosome 22 called the EP300 gene, which is a transcriptional co-activator. So it essentially helps transcribe certain genes and it's involved in chondrogenesis so seems to make a great candidate. Um, the current stuff I was going to spend most of the time on, I'll kind of skip through it, was now moving away from DNA to predict morphologic traits and the clinical outcome and now use RNA to see if that can help shed light. So we collected pediatric patients going under decompression surgery, collected a lot of information. This just shows you in the data set. I would also like to point out that it seems like everything we do in Chiari is on small numbers of patients. So we have to get to the point where we can collaborate together and really encourage patients and families to participate. So this was the data set, um, mostly male, mostly white. Most of them did not have a serenex. In this analysis, actually, most of them did not have family history. They were young because they were pediatric. These are some of the morphologic measures we took. Okay, thank you. Oh, that's fine. Um, this is just the questionnaire which interrogated pre-surgical symptoms, pregnancy, history, a lot of the stuff that I just described to you. Um, and then in terms of the RNA, how did we do this? Well, we took the blood, we took the dura mater tissue, and we extracted the RNA from that. And I'm sure probably a lot of you are sophisticated enough to know there's this new, hot new technique called RNA-seq, which is out there. We did not do that because it was cost prohibitive at the time. So instead, we actually ran an Illumina array. Nonetheless, 
I still interrogated gene expression for close to 30,000 genes. So we used some sophisticated statistical clustering algorithms. <coughs> and really, the idea was to take the expression patterns and see if we can use them to subset patients into separate categories. So for example, does my RNA expression pattern look more like Paolo's or does it look more like Claire's? So that was sort of the whole idea. And we did tissue-specific analysis joint tissue analyses, and we also did pathway analyses. So uh, one of the findings when using blood expression patterns was we were able to distinguish, you can see the blue dots are one group, the red dots the second group, two patient classes based on blood expression. The class zero appeared to be a much more severe group of patients. I'm still not sure why, but they had younger fathers, but more pain, um, smaller cranial morphology measures. And then this part, we still don't understand either, but they had an upregulation of a number of different biologic pathways like the ribosomes, the proteasomes, and the spliceosomes. Oops. So, um, when looking at the dura, one of the most interesting things which popped up was the pathway analysis implicated this RSPH set of genes. So these are, I'm going to say this wrong, radial spoke head-like genes. Um, and these genes are really interesting because they're involved in modal cilia. So they've been involved or implicated in hydrocephalus, which is also <laughs> interesting because what we see is one of the differences between these two classes of patients is the presence or absence of hydrocephalus. So for the last slide, class zero seemed to be more severe. For this slide, class one is more severe. Um, and I just told you that kind of stuff. So this is just kind of the summary. Um, using these mRNA profiles, generally we were able to distinguish at least two classes of patients, whether we use the dura expression or the blood expression. I don't know whether we expected or we were surprised, but we did not see a great deal of concordance in terms of gene expression patterns from blood and dura. But we did see some interesting associations, like I mentioned, this RSPH3 gene. Um, and I didn't touch on this before, but this gene is interesting not only from the RNA analysis, but also from the DNA analysis, because it was supported as one of our linkage peaks. So, um, but we do acknowledge this was a small sample size. Also, it was a pediatric sample. So it's hard to know if what we identified in this patient subset sort of translates to adult patients, for example. And uh, I also put down here too, we still remain kind of unsure whether we were even looking at the right tissue. So, so I always, be happy to sort of get some <coughs> input and feedback from the clinicians to see what they think. But so this is the current QRE team. As I mentioned, Christina Marcunas was supported by CSF. We received a little bit of funding from the other two patient support groups and of course NINDS. So, um, and 
most of you had a chance to meet Christina, so I just thought I would show you a picture of her at graduation, wearing the goofy hat. Because you know, as a PhD and you're a geek, you don't, you know, you don't look geeky enough, you have to wear a funny hat. So, anyway. Okay, thank you guys for...